Change the way you buy QPower to make it easier and more accessible. You can now access the same service quickly and get your cash power tokens instantly with the new QCell QPower code. To light up your world, simply dial star 363 hash. With a touch of your fingers, with ease and convenience from the comfort of your home or office, you can bring light into your world instantly with star 363 hash. Q power, light in your world. Q cell sunyabus. We, we innovate, innovate others, others follow. follow. It's always good to be here on this morning and of course um, by my joined by my amazing colleague Ansumana Esonyasi. Yep. And uh, we're going straight to social issues and we have Sidi Saidi Khan, uh, migration advocate, Jashpur and mentor. Uh, Mr. Saidi Khan, welcome to this morning. It's good to have you here. Thank you so very much and I'm happy to be here. And it's good to see you, so. Is he brother to Buba Sedikan? Buba Sedikan of Q cell, yes. Maybe seconds are always brother, so. It could be a family member. Mr. Sedikan, you are here so that we can discuss this topic, migration. I mean, in Africa, migration cannot be stopped. It is part of life, you understand, moving from one place to another. And... But the way people are thinking migration nowadays, not even now, um, have become a big problem, especially in Africa. Um, can you take us through the process? Thank you so very much uh, for giving me this platform and the opportunity to raise, you know, such an important issue when it comes to, yeah, our Africa in general. Um, yeah, we all know that migration is something that is a global issue and it's always important. And I'm going to take an example of myself. I have been here, I have been going to school at the same time, and I traveled through this um, illegal migration called the Parkway. And yeah, so I know exactly the effects and also how we, you know, as a, as a youth living in, the, in, in, in Gambia or in Africa, you know, thinking about Europe the way it is and what is there is totally different. So well, let's talk about migration itself. How does it affect our lives? You know, um, I'm here today. Just I want to make sure that people know that you know the um, the importance of information because we are not informed about the whole issue of migration and the illegal migration. People are just see people traveling. Okay, they are in Europe and that's all. Mm -hmm. So, to me, what I want to say is that there is so much thing you know about this illegal migration, and we have to find a ways you know to minimize it because we're going to eradicate it, like you said. And doing that, we have to inform people the effects and the danger about it and give them um, possible alternatives, you know, how they can travel to other countries to Europe, in the example, without taking the risky journey called the back way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here today. You just okay. mentioned something very important. Mm -hmm. There are so many things when it comes to um, migration. We just want you to break down those things for us. I mean, we, we want to know exactly. Because me sitting here, um, thinking, mm -hmm. uh, taking the back way to Europe, you understand, M might be a solution for other people. You understand, you're telling me there are many things. Tell us these things. Maybe someone is sitting out there who doesn't know um, the dangers involved. If I want to tell you all the dangers here, my bro, we're going to talk to you tomorrow, but I'm going to break it down, like you said, and make sure that people get to know and understand that we're not here to say, people, you don't need to go through the back way, or you don't need to travel, because you're going to just sit down and say, hey, you don't need to take the back way, because everyone has his own reasons. And any migrant who travels through this back way have his own reason why he is taking the journey. Like I said, I take an example of myself. I've been working here, I've been going to school, I've been even started to be, you know, um, taking my career as a journalist. Yeah. So in that case, I myself took this journey. So, you know, but what I want to say, let's, say, let's go through um, the issue why I say there are so many things that people don't know. One thing is the information. People always get, you know, the false information on social media. You know, they don't get right information about this whole issue. And to us, what is important as a migrants media network, we're trying to make sure that we give people the reliable information and facts about this journey. One thing, from Gambia to Germany or to Italy, example, people will see like, okay, I'm Dugamoto, Italy, Dugamoto, Dugamoto. 
But there are so many risks, even from here to Senegal. At the borders, you have a problem there. Senegal, they will ask you to pay money before you're going to pass. Fale won't set passport or you're from Gambia. They don't care. As far as you're taking this journey, you're going to be prepared to take. So, affects your hand and your body is one example. Then you see people in your hand that you go with trauma. Then you're in the second you, know, you cannot do nothing. You see a friend come and five days, I can't remember. If you go back home, tell my mom that I'm going to die here. So I cannot survive here. You see people in your hand, and they, you know, they know they say, but we have seen that videos. You know, but I believe that people don't get this information because feeling inf um, connect internet connection is always not easy for people you want to engage in social media the way they want it. It's on the video, on the finish. So we go hold, so we get a whole video, you video, produce call, from the fair, you know, how to am connection, you know. So people don't want to use that. They use their internet, pretty much, I'm living in So no matter, you know, as a mentor, we came back here, we went to the schools, then them rural areas and other places to make sure that we update people about these issues. Look, the funny thing is, you have the traffic, as you have the new dual thing, you know, we could take it to Europe or the Arabic countries, you can have a job and stuff. At the end, it's different, you know. So no matter what, the effects you're going to have, Monica. Then I'm your hand in your I'm trauma in your rain it, then your day, then your use how is your hand in the use for you create business for yourself. So I mean these are the things your hand that then go buga expose and what people get to know exactly Blanga Jel Yonbi. There are so many dangers on this journey that then go around before I decide. Let you make a smart decision before Nigel Yonbi. Yeah. But I, I went to the same school with, in junior school with CD and I you school. all went to Banyulundi? Um, I mean, no, the same pri uh, junior school. Junior um, school. Yeah. I can't remember when last I saw him. It's been many, many years. And I have to say that um, I, I am proud that he's come back home and tried to sensitize people about an experience he's lived through. Um, he started a journalism career, and I was really surprised, you know, to know that, you know, he also left um, through the uh, illegal route. But given what you have experienced, you know, and and and... Now, if you were to give any advice, especially to the younger ones, because you look at um, the population uh, of, I mean, the people that leave this country to travel to other parts of the world, to the illegal routes, um, majority are young people, like you and I. If you were to give any advice, what would it be? I would say change your mindset, you know, focus and believe that you can achieve your goal in this country. And if you are to travel anywhere else, make sure that you are prepared, you know, psychologically, mentally, okay? And we all know this now, even in the Gambia, I've seen people who are now engaging in skill work. And now even it's easier for people to achieve their goals here in Gambia. So what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna advise young people today is that you have to have a goal. In achieving the goal, you have to change your mindset. You know, you have to believe that you are the only person who can change that. Not anyone else. You can succeed better than I who is living in Europe. Doesn't mean if I'm living in Europe, I have to be, you know, I'm successful. No, you can be here and be who you want to be. So which means if you're going to school, you want to be a lawyer, which means you need to work hard. You need to go to school. From school, you have to study hard, even harder. So it's not just that people believe that like from like, Europe is everything. But that's, that's totally wrong, you know? So me, what I'm gonna advise my brothers, my colleagues, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna advise my brother to this journey because I know what is there. And if you wanna achieve your goal in Europe, it's the same hard we're gonna do here in Europe too. If you've been in Europe, trust me, if you don't work hard, you're gonna work even extra hard in that country for you to achieve your goals, you know? You need to believe that you have a goal and you wanna conquer that. So obstacles are gonna come, you're gonna face difficulties, but those difficulties are part of it. You're gonna just be, you know, yeah, Jambi without going through so many difficulties. No, if you want to be a president, my friend, you, get, you need to be part of the, you need to, you need to get into politics. Yeah. You get me? I went to Europe, but I told you, I went through so many obstacles. I've seen people die in my face. I've seen lives taken in my face. I've seen people drowning. I don't want to go through that way anymore. So I would advise people to go through that way. And I've seen now opportunities in, in Europe that, that our brothers can use. They have to know it. I'm here to give them these issues. They have to give them this information. Okay. In Germany, there are so many things that I want to give them. Sidi, um, don't take me now as the presenter in the studio. Take me as a NAP boy who want to travel to Europe. Yeah. You are telling me not to take the back way. Yeah. 
and you took the bad way. Yeah. Look at you. You look very good. <laughs> you travel. You yeah. came. Yeah. If you are not 100% successful, yeah. you are semi-successful. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So you are telling me not to use the bad way. Mm. Why? I'm not telling you not to use the bad way. I make it clear here. I say, <laughs> I'm saying, if you're taking the bad way, make sure you know what, what are the effects and what are the dangers that you're going to face in that place. We're not, we're not telling anyone, don't take the bad way, the illegal migration. No. We're saying, make sure you know what you're going to face there. And make sure you know your options. Smart migration. If I'm going through this bad way, how much am I going to spend? Know that, what do I need? What am I going to face? Because I know one thing. If I knew what I'm going to face at that place, I knew it already. I'm not going to get If you know that you're going to die today, that you're going to go out to your place, you're going to die. My friend, you, did it. you will not leave this place. It's not this house. So the issue is we're trying to make sure that we give the people the information they need. We're not asking anyone to, not to take the journey. But we're trying to also make sure that we advocate and make sure we give them the information they need. Because I know there are ways other alternatives. And these other alternatives are the things that we want to bring to our country. Show them that there are possibilities to go through Europe, uh, Europe with smart migration. Smart migration in the sense that people who are under skill. Skill workers in Gambia, people thought that they are nothing. Fitters, electricians, you know. They are like, ah, yeah, 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 These are skills. We, in Germany, in fact, 2020, in the first of... Uh, marriage, they, they opened a new law that involved, you know, encouraging skilled workers from third countries to come to Germany and work. They can even apply from G Gambia and go and search for a work in Germany for six months. And this is eligible for everybody. But you need to have something. As I said, you need to have something. You need to work and have a goal. Mm -hmm. You need to have a career. You need to have a skill. You need to have a degree. If before I came, there is a woman I know, she's a doctor in the Gambia. She want to study surgery, but she want to go to Germany. But the issue, the ways to do it is good. So I have to make sure that I coach them how to make the, how to find easy ways. And what? Guess what? The last day, the first day before I came here, I'm, the girl is in Berlin. We met. She's the one who even take me to a place I have to, have to go. It's amazing. Mm. So easy. But she have a degree. She's a doctor. Of course, everybody will need her. Mm. But she need the language. She want to do surgery. So which means she need still help in different ways. You can be a, a carpenter here, a, a, a nurse, and go to Europe and work without going to the back way. You know what we think in the Gambia, yeah. especially African countries mostly, we think when you go to Europe, it's easy to get money. The money is all over. I, I mean, money. yeah, we <laughs> see money all over. <laughs> when you get, when you get, okay, let's say uh, a 10 euro. Yeah. I mean, it's like 10 euro, boy, it's a lot of money in the Gambia. When I go, tough, tough, six months, I make it, send, 10 euro, uh, ten, t send this money and to in my this, people. In addition, the influence of semesters, you come here, you dress, you know, flamboyantly, you, yes. know, you drive And we, we think cars, the semester you know, is having that. millions. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the thing is that German people say it, you know, Kleidung macht Leute, which means clothes can divine you, okay? In Europe, they speak different, of course. If in Europe, what they pay you is different. But if you calculate the taxes you pay, the money you use for your house, if you want to live a good life in Europe, you need to work. As you're working hard here, you need to go to school, you need to have a degree, you need to study. You, need to, you have to work really hard. Because the, the more you have degrees, the more you have skills, the more you work hard, the more you have good life in Europe. Okay? So all the people you see, they have good clothes and stuff. They have to enjoy their country because in there, they don't have chance and possibilities and that time to put on these big clothes and enjoy this because you see semesters enjoying it. They don't enjoy it here because they don't have that time. So I mean, it's okay, let them enjoy it. But the thing is, you can also enjoy it here, okay? The same time. You are all here, you also having big cars, my friend. Look at your suit. I don't have this in Germany. I I, 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 I do my shows, but I don't have these big suits. You know, um, you know my friend. So they are all but see, considering <laughs> Considering the pay scale in the Gambia, I mean, and things are rising, man. That's why the youths are taking bad way. Yeah, but the bad way is no more the way because the thing is, bro. If I tell you, ninety percent, fifty percent are dying. Fifty percent, bro. I'm an advocate for six years. The biggest page for European migration is mine. I own it. What's on Italy is mine. I have a project called We Migrant. It's mine. I'm working for MMN. This project is just. 
diaspora program, and it's not just in Gambia, it's in Ghana. Go to this country to make we advocate. So I'm not just saying, let them not take the journey, because I've seen what is happening. I've seen my sisters are going through a lot. I've seen my brothers. I've seen my brothers who went through this journey. They are now in Europe. They are going through psychological problems. I have to find ways to give them. Believe me, bro. Maybe you don't know, but SOs have watched some of my programs. I've seen people who are going through a lot. Yeah, I think so, I watched one of your interviews. So, I, was, I was actually going to ask about that. Mm. I mean, you started a career here in Gambia, and then you left. You went to Europe. You could have uh, maybe been pursuing some other career or, you know, hustling, doing some other stuff. But you choose to specialize in supporting migrants, other migrants like yourself, uh, to settle in Europe and, and get a good life. Um, why, why, why choose that route? Why, why that and not doing some other hustle, you know, or maybe pursuing some other career? I think this is a very important, thank you for asking this question yeah. because this is what everybody asks. And people see that, okay, see your mom, you succeeded, you have everything, but I don't. But I knew this when I came to Europe, I find out that the information I get about Europe is different. And not everybody is like me, having an energy, you know, believe that I can make it, I have to work hard. And not everybody is so strong as I am. So there are people who needed me. I mean, I've seen people who are older than me and they're living in Europe for 30 years. They need advice, in fact, in fact, information, how to get their permits to so stay in Europe. They have been there for so many years, they don't get their documents. So I mean, when I get to Europe, I said to myself, this is uh, crazy. There must be a place where people can get information. So I create a quick page. So this page where everybody can have this access to get reliable information. Mm -hmm. And after that, I've seen that this is not the only thing I can do. There are people who are not educated. They cannot read and write. So which means I have to find a way to make communicate verbally to people. They have to go live and talk. All the things that I write, I make sure that I communicate verbally. Mm -hmm. And after that, I said, okay, I have to create this another way. I have to find another way now. I have to make sure that I communicate with them. People who went through this journey and they have problems and they face so many things. Now I communicate with migrants themselves. We talk, we make, we, we have souls. They talk, we create, you know, a big platform where we engage ourselves. We talk about things that affects us. Now I find my way and say, okay, now I'm going to do a program. Now I, I have an opportunity to create a program on the TV in Germany, where I have my own soul, inviting stakeholders, government and migrants come and talk about issues, social issues, issues that are affecting us. Because I believe there must be a voice that are going to support the voiceless. There must be somebody who is going to stand there and give them, who is going to coach them, who is going to help them, who is going to give them this power to believe in themselves. And it's working, you know? So I've, this is something that I think... I, I have watched some of your shows and I've seen um, some of the interviews that you've um, had with some very big media houses in Europe as well. Um, your network, I've seen videos of you and uh, migrants from... You're Gambian. Yeah. You deal with not only Gambians, but brothers and sisters from other uh, African yes. countries as well. Yeah. How many people are you supporting? Is your network reaching out to? I think... I remember the last thing I called my page in 28 days, I reached 1 million 200, I don't know, 1 million at first, 1 point something uh, people in 28 days. Are you reaching out? Yeah, yeah reaching out. Wow. And the topest country that I'm reaching right now is Italy, you call Germany, if it's Africa, you have Gambia top, you have Nigeria, you have Sierra Leone, you have Ghana. And I think I have the, um, yeah, the, um, the analysis made from here too. Um, so it means, um, I'm reaching the whole Africa, I'm reaching the whole Europe and now in fact I work now as a social worker in, in a, um, another uh, place in, in Bremen that's also not just like from, it's a little, bit from, a little bit far away from where I'm living and because that's where Gambians are too, you know, there are so many Gambians who are living down there I, I, I want to try to make sure I connect with my Gambian brothers because they need it you know, and they, they, Germany is a country that you need to be very strong because they are too Get, the bureaucracy is crazy, you know, and people are scared to be deported back. And I try to fight away, find chance opportunities to give them this support in order to find their ways and live the way they, you know, want to live well, mm -hmm. in Germany. Yes, um, you know, me sitting here and looking at you, I, I think you are a blessing um, to, Absolutely. to people. I mean, it's like God sent you out there to go and learn and see the life and come back teach people and support people you know sometimes it's a 
a blessing in disguise, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I think it's important. So what are some of the projects that you people are working on currently um, to, to make this more, 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 more complex, more, more, more strong for people? Yeah, thank you so very much. Um, yeah, we, like I said, this is the first time that we have this mentors here. Right? We are three numbers, three people who are selling the Gambia. Last year, we, uh, because of the corona, we couldn't come to Gambia. So 2019, and our first uh, batch was sent to Ghana. And yeah, they went to their mentor people, give them information. In fact, some people even came to Germany. And this year, we have the opportunity to come here. So um, three of us are here. Um, two other people are sent to different uh, places. I was sent to rural area in LLR. So I went to the schools, I went to, uh, to the radios, I went to the community level, I met youths and football players, and then I have a, you know, a chat with them. I remember guys, people that I mentored, um, two people, one person is uh, a baker in Gambia here, and mm -hmm. I think he's watching me. And this girl is a fuller boy, he contacted me, he said he's doing crazy, amazing, amazing work. So when I saw this, I said, wow, this guy is, he is amazing. He's doing, he's really hard working. Then I share these on my page, try to find a support for him. From there, then I saw him a ways what he has to do to find, you know, a career, you know, if he want to do more of his job in bakery. And he said he really want to do more, um, he want to study bakery and stuff like that. And Germany, we have kids who are like, they're supporting people who want to do that. So we find ways and now he apply for it and they give him the opportunity. So within two weeks, he's already accepted and he told me that he's gonna go there it's for three days uh, three weeks and it's gonna be in english and this is super and this person is a baker mm. and baker if people saw them in the way they're gonna say exactly wow. yeah. they're gonna say like, you know and these are things that we encourage we came here try to show people okay there's are possibilities here these are alternatives here we went to the schools it's very important for me schools are always one of the toughest places that i always want to go and sensitize and we have also um, things like um, online hoods where people can connect it to our webinar without even having internet, you know, because oh. we believe that Africa, there's this problem that people have, you know, difficulties to get internet, oh. uh, to have access yes, to internet. Exactly. It's very not, expensive not, here. Yeah, not everybody. Yeah, mm. it's difficult and it's expensive here. So we said, okay, people need to have information. People need to know if they want to go to study, where do they want to go? What what are the places, what are the right, uh, you know, uh, w websites, you know, to go to and, and, and search for their opportunities if they want to study, you know. Of course, there are possibilities, there are scholarships, you know. So there you have to know. And like I said, skill works. Like in Germany, they accept people, but they need to know. They need to know, okay, this, there are possibilities for me to go to, you know, without going through this back way, you know. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that we also make access to so that they can get, when we also create gyms, a gym that will show you, you're going to play the game, but you're going to know we did this game. Unfortunately, I didn't play this game, but it's amazing. We played, and you're going to find out how difficult it is to take this illegal migration and to take this bad migration, and what are the difficulties there. You're going to play it, and the same that you will be arrested, you will be drowned, or whatever is going to happen. Anything that happened to the journey is on the game. It's on the game. So we create all those things for the people to, you know, get to learn and know that there are so many things that they didn't know about. D did you have an occasion to meet the German Chancellor? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. We, the, the, um, the foreign affairs is the one, the for, German foreign affairs are the people who sponsored in fact this project mm -hmm. and I'm trying my best to make sure that I also contact and meet people, uh, the media, so that people get to know it because normally a project is just to go and meet the schools and the rural area, make our you know, community outreach stuff and that's all. But communicating, I said, that's not the only thing I have to do here before I go back. I have to make sure that people get to see what I'm going to say, people need to listen to me. And yeah, and this is why I'm here and I want to make sure that I reach the people. You live in Germany and because of the work you do, you get to interact with a lot of Gambians. Uh, what are some of the most common problems that Gambians usually face out there? Um, first thing is language barrier. I mean, <laughs> communication is always difficult in Germany. The language, I'm sorry, but even me. Yeah, I've seen it's <laughs> even had an impact on your, on your, <laughs> to on your, on your, your tone now, yeah, your accent. So, yeah, I can so feel that. It's kind of difficult because the language is too deep. It's, you know, like, it's like Arabic, like, <sighs> it's, <laughs> heavy. it's too heavy. <laughs> even me, I can pronounce some words like, you know, I'm not very fluent in it, but I try to make sure that I don't give up speaking the language. And I don't care 
you know me, in school time. Yeah. When I'm speaking English, I, 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 I speak English with Mandinga and all of together and people laugh. I don't care who laugh. I'm just trying to yeah. make sure that you're, I you're communicate, communicate the way I want. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. The problem so many people are facing is the language barrier and people who are not educated have so many problems there. Like mm -hmm. I said, we're trying to make sure that they are educated. And there is deportation issue. Yeah. It, bureaucracy is a problem. And this deputation is, is bringing so many people. It's t in fact, so many people are going through mental issues because of that. You know, and we have been we have been fighting for that so many years, and we were going to fight for that. And it's a problem. It's a big problem because somebody who sacrifices his life to go to Europe, at the same time, you are asked to be deported back to your country. With you know, it's it's hard, it's sad to see. And these are problems that people are facing. They're scared even to start something because they're scared that if they start to work or do something, they ask them their passport. Wow, they'll be deported. That's the mentality they have. So we also try to find ways to support those people, give them information they need. Because some people also get false information. You'll be like, don't go to school. And at the same time, people say, so bring us a passport. You'll be deported. But that's not the case. Not everybody who brings the passport will be deported. Mm -hmm. So these are the problems that many of us are facing. Many Gambians are facing the language barrier, you know, the bureaucracy in Germany, and the, the petition issue that is bringing so many difficulties among us. But boys are doing really well they are working so hard so hard mm -hmm. and i'm saying that you know anyone who is watching me if you have a brother a sister who is down there please don't give them don't pressurize them mm -hmm. because pressurizing them from here mm -hmm. is going to give them put them into problems because they're going to do things that they shouldn't do you go tell your brother i need this i need iphone 11 iphone 12 <laughs> whilst you are living in a kitchen uh, uh, in it's crazy mm -hmm. bro you have to have priorities, you need to think higher. You need to know that my brother is down there, he's working hard for us. We're going to enjoy, my brother is working. Like I said, that's why I said, if semesters came here with their orders, with everything here, they deserve it. Because they don't have that time down there. They're working so hard. So people need to know this. People don't, just, you know, it's good to envy, it's good to be jealous. But sometimes you need to understand that there are things that you don't know about, you know? So what I'm going to say is that there are so many things that people don't know. and I'm. In anyone who have a question, you can just can go to our place, our website, where Migrants Media Network, and just ask anything else, even about scholarship. We're going to be happy to respond to them and give them anything they want to show, you know. Thank you very much, Mr. C.D. Serikan, Migration Advocate, um, doing a wonderful job, Indeed. and I am impressed, and I've learned a lot. Absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. not... Um, it's not the way it looks. It looks yeah. rosy yeah. Uh, there, but it's not the way. There are many things involved. Mm -hmm. uh, most people will think if you just travel to Europe, you are okay, you are fine. And yeah. many people are living in Europe uh, with so much difficulties. Yeah. And thanks, we have people like Sadiq and um, trying to uplift their lives, trying to help them, try to coach them. Yeah. And we are wishing you good luck. And we are hopeful we'll have you again on this platform another time. Indeed, I have to say I'm very much proud of CD. It's been almost 10 years since I last mm. saw him. Uh, mm. Boy, he's doing a great job and Gambia is proud of you. Keep it up. Thank oh, you so 10 much. years. Almost Do 10 years. Know, he's married <laughs> now with a kid. I've seen. He's a father. <laughs> I've seen. This guy. I've seen. He's a big one now. You know? He's this a guy. father. He's a father. This yes. Guy. Now, I, I, I know I'm very proud of him. So really, I, I, think, I think I'm proud of you all. And I thank, thank you, you for bringing me on your platform. This is an amazing platform and an amazing initiative. You know, so for you, really, I'm very proud of you. Don't Since school time, he's, he's always been you know, very fluent. And still now, thank, he thank loves the work in journalism. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think you know, my, you my favorite journalist you know, and oh. CD we are also proud and happy that yeah. a Gambian is Indeed. doing this I mean it makes me very proud to hear this is your Gambian brother doing such a huge job in Europe